when I went back through like changing my food, writing the book, taking the kids out of school for the year, deciding I could be one kind of entrepreneur and then a different kind of entrepreneur, like all of these felt like really big choices. And I realized that it was how I went about choosing things, making choices, having a vision, making a plan and following through on the plan that was my secret sauce. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Relaunch Podcast. And I am here today. I'm going to be bringing you someone. There is so much goodness in what you're going to get from today's show. When you're thinking about overwhelm, when you're thinking about setting boundaries, when you're thinking about like, how am I going to get through whatever it is, put the dot, dot, dot in it. This is the gal that's going to help get us off the ledge, okay? Her name is Mia Moran. She is a mom of three, a coach who has struck her perfect balance between motherhood, wellness, and work. She supports high-achieving female entrepreneurs who are overwhelmed with the life and wellness pieces, right? Putting that all together. And she has crafted a plan simple, which is also her podcast, Plan Simple Podcast. And she's a best selling author of Plan Simple Meals. Are you getting something here? Let's make it simple. Plan simple, everyone. <laughs> and she's also the creator of the flow planning method. And so we are going to hear today about the tips, the strategies of what you can actually take away from this expert who has been there, done it, seen it all, and lives to tell about it. <laughs> so right now, hey, Mia, love Hi. to have you on. I'm really excited. And the way I always like to start the shows is I like to ask, you know, what was the most so far, most significant relaunch, and how did it lead you to where you are right now? Absolutely. So here's the thing, because you're talking to entrepreneurs, and I don't feel like we always hear this story. I feel like the story that gets told a lot is from corporate to entrepreneur, you know, like that's what tends to happen to women. So I think I worked in what wasn't even really corporate because it was for a really small company for like a year, but I've always been an entrepreneur. So my story started is that I'm a graphic designer by trade and pretty quickly out of school, I opened up a graphic design studio and scaled it. And while I was doing that, I had three kids who are now teenagers, but at the time of my big moment, they were not teenagers. They were all under the age of five. So I had three another, kids. another mom of three kids and a yeah. step kids. So yes, we get it. You know, there, there's always something going on at yeah. our house, right? Always, always. So I had these three kids who I was so grateful that I had, was an entrepreneur and I had like created my company this way. And it was a very like traditional company. Like I, you know, there was no work from home. We had an office, but like the babysitter could bring the kids and I could nurse at the, at the, at the office. So there was some perks to it. Um, but, and, and I kind of felt like at that moment, like I had checked off all the boxes. I, I still am happily married and was at the time married to someone who I met in high school, who, you know, I just loved dearly. And I was like, I couldn't believe that, like I had found the guy and we had bought our first real estate. Like we had bought our first apartment. We had these three beautiful kids. I had this thriving company, like, which wasn't even in the boxes that I was trying to check off. So I just felt like I had really checked off all the boxes. And so I was feeling pretty bad about the fact that I felt really bad, <laughs> but I was not. Isn't that interesting? Here you, here you have everything that you thought you wanted yet inside you're feeling like, uh, I'm a failure because I'm not happy with what I have. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I it was like really confusing. And I, I don't even think I would have, I would have voiced it that way at the time. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't even understand, like I could say that now, you know, years later, but I didn't understand that at the time. So at the time I had this 
day where I had come into the office as I do. And I had, I had, I had really like, I mean, I had made it so great. I had, I was not working five days a week. I was working closer to four days a week. I, I felt like I had, I had gotten this balance of, of work and motherhood. And I would, I would go home at, at three 30. So this particular day, it was like two 30. And I just remember looking across my desk and being like, oh my God, how did I get seven Starbucks cups this t- today? Like today, they were all in a stack on my desk. Seven. I was like, how did those, yeah, I was like, how did those all get there? And then I, re- so I remember that thought and being like, gosh, I must not be very efficient today. And then I remember thinking like, why am I so tired? Cause I just was exhausted. And that's how it was really coming up for me that I was not like something was off. I was just like, I am exhausted. And after I just seven cups thinking, of coffee, <laughs> after seven cups of coffee, yeah. I was like, yeah, the knew, apps are all wrong. Yeah. Caffeine does we know, not work. <laughs> we know something's wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we know there's, there's some balance situation here. That needs I, to be addressed. I was like, what, what? Like they, they told me that caffeine makes you have energy and here I am exhausted. And I just remember thinking like, how am I going to go home right now? Like, how am I going to go home? and be a mom. Like, how am I going to even leave my office right now with a smile on my face with all the people who were, you know, looking up to me. And so really in this moment, I was like, oh my gosh, I really need to take care of my body. That was what came up like loud and clear. I had definitely, you know, I had, I had had three kids within five years. And so I was either pregnant or nursing pretty much for six years straight. And so and my body did not bounce back in between. So I was like, all right, so something's going on with the body. So for whatever reason, I don't even know where this came from, but I was like, I'm going to go to yoga today. And so I literally went down the street, bought clothes and went to a yoga class like that afternoon. And that was really my tipping point. Like, because in that class, I just love the teacher. I'm not the most outgoing person, though people wouldn't understand that about me now, but really at the time I was not the most outgoing person. And I just, after class was like, oh my God, I have to meet this lady. So I went and I introduced myself. I I basically was like, you need a website. I can get you a website. I need to feel better. I think you can make me feel better. Like, I don't even know what I said, but we became friends. And she, the next day was like, you need to change what you're eating. So overnight, And mind you, I did not at this point in my life know how to like cook an egg. I don't know how I was feeding these three children, but like cooking was not in my wheelhouse. That was not what I had learned. That was not my thing. I had my go to take out five (laughs) five different meals, and my kids would be like, Is it this? Or is it that? Yeah. Yeah. Mommy, is it going to be this? And I'm like, Oh no, I've got two up my sleeve. You haven't, you haven't named yet. But what's interesting, I wanted to say, is that it is interesting. I always find when I'm talking to people, I had to kick the Starbucks habit. And I mm-hmm. was, I was a two chai lattes a day girl, sometimes even three until I saw something on one of those sh- shows that, you know, kind of throws it in your face. Like, do you know how much sugar is in a chai yeah. latte? I used and that they, slide for many years. <laughs> and they started to pour all that. And I'm like, <gasps> And they're like, yeah. and this is how much you're supposed to have in a day. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I think I've just had that in, like, this is my monthly allotment. And I had it in the first half of my day. It was like yeah. so bad. And it was a wake up call as well, because I, there were, like I said, days where I'm like, I'll take a third, like I'm a little tired. <laughs> I yeah. have had the sugar drop. So this is really interesting that sometimes we have to kick a habit in order and, and have it be super uncomfortable, like, you know, not having seven cups of coffee or a couple chai lattes or more in order to even begin to get like an awareness of like, oh, geez, something, something's yeah. not right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. So, so coffee went away overnight, like literally food transformed. I haven't had gluten or dairy since that day. Um, hmm so many things changed. Like we're not going to go down that rabbit hole today, but like just pretty much I overhauled my food and I kept it really simple because I didn't know how to cook. So I tell everyone like, yes, I overhauled my food, but that meant that I ate the same three things every day for like four months until I got sick of it. And then I like Googled a cooking class and that was kind of my next step. So, so basically you I, know, I felt, Mia, Mia, yeah. before you go on, cause I know there's a lot of people that think about like, okay, she gave up coffee, gluten, dairy was, is that 
is that something that you recommend to kind of like, you know, just, just go full in, or can you do it where it's like, okay, I'm going to give up coffee first. And then maybe I'll try giving up dairy. What was the reasoning behind kind of going cold Turkey? Okay. So cold Turkey for me was, I was miserable and I was like looking for any solution. And this was the solution that this woman, this yoga teacher gave me. And I was like, great, I'm, I'm all in. I'll try it. Okay. Um, but that said, so, and I'll tell you like the outcome of that in a second, but now that I work with people all the time. Um, so for me, and, and I did end up having caffeine again in life. So I haven't had gluten or dairy since, but I have had coffee. I just don't have seven cups. Um, though that said, I have not had caffeine in about six months and I haven't had alcohol in a couple of years. And so I think there's definitely things you can play with. I always just think of it like experiments. Mm -hmm. Um, dairy as well can be an experiment. Um, the one thing about gluten is it real? If it is something that wreaks havoc in your body, if you take it out and add it back in, like, it's not like a 24 hour reset, like a lot of other things might be, Mm -hmm. it really needs time. Um, and so gluten's a harder one, like, gluten, and again, gluten like is wheat. Gonna, yeah. Wheat. Right. Yeah. Okay. And, wheat. and less of that doesn't help. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter whether you're having less, it matters that you're having it. So that's the one where, you know, I don't know. And not everybody's as affected by it, but I've worked yeah. with a lot of people and when you I take- find that a lot of people are really surprised what happens when they take it out. Yeah, it was an interesting, um, when my daughter was, I think, 14 or 15, she had to have an emergency gallbladder and Mm. have that taken out. And she, you know, thin, you know, fit going out, doing a whole bunch of things. So she was not the normal to have something like this happen. And when she came home, we had to modify the diet and we had, you know, the gluten, I had to be cooking gluten-free and uh, dairy. We took, we, we had to take everything out and then we worked things back in. What was really too bad about her story is that she still has the same problems she had before she had her gallbladder out. So we kept trying, kept trying, kept trying, but I do think it's really interesting, you know, as you said, you now have, you know, coffee once in a while, although you haven't had caffeine in a while, I switched entirely to green tea and I, it's different. It's totally different. Yeah. I think, and then part of like the part of the coffee thing is a lot of times it's what we have it with, right? Like you said, you had sugar with it. We have milk with it, you know? So sometimes it's actually not the coffee for a while. I tried mm. having it black to see if that solved anything for me. And I did not like that as much, but, um, but the, it's it just does not make as you much feel fun. better. <laughs> it's not as much fun, but it does make you feel better. So, so I did this thing. And the, the thing I tell people about when you really lean into changing your food is it's amazing. The effects food has on us that it's hard to see when we're just like in it and we're like, you know, post a holiday meal and we're just feeling really lethargic, but then it goes away in a couple of days. When you, when you clean up your food, like I tell people it was literally like 15 years of therapy in, in a week, like so many things fixed themselves so quickly. It was, it blew my mind. Like I, Mm. I couldn't, I couldn't even comprehend it. I, literally had the worst seasonal allergies before this. Like, so my eyes were always like watery and poofy. I took a lot of allergy medicine, haven't had taken an allergy pill since I always took like two times a year antibiotics. Cause I always had ear infections, have not had an ear mm-hmm. infection since I was just yeah. like happy. Dude, I didn't need? have, yeah, my, my menstrual cycle wasn't working. Haven't had that problem since like so many things just really were solved. And so that's super interesting about, you know, even menstrual cycles. Cause I know there is a lot of women out there that are perimenopausal. I know I am, and it is a crazy ride that we're on right now. And so oh my God, so I, crazy and so crazy. Support it. Yeah. Mm. And, and that's the other thing and, and things change. So people ask me all the time, like what I ate and I hate answering that question. So we're not even gonna talk about it here, but it's because like now it's changing again. Like I can see, like we just, food is a way that we can solve for how we're feeling. And that shifts, it shifts when we're in our, you know, I was in my early thirties when this happened, then it shifts in in perimenopause. It shifts when you're pregnant. Like there's all sorts of different times for food. So I think it's really important to spend time figuring out what your food is instead of what the latest trend is. And just understanding that your food might not be like the whole smorgasbord and that's fine. And 
it feels really good to feel good. So I recommend that everybody experiment a little bit just to even get that feeling for a week of what it feels like to really feel good. Cause I think many of us don't always feel good. So I got lucky enough that I had this like extended thing of feeling good. And then what happened was I was like, interesting, my like, well, how am I going to bring the kids along? Mm. And I got really interested in food and like what food was doing. Mind you, I was still running this design firm and I still had three kids, but, and I was like, try to cook, but I got really interested and wanted to learn more. So I started, it was pre podcasting time. Cause this was like 13 years ago. So I started interviewing people though. Like I, I was just like, I wanted to interview all the experts. And at the time it was a lot of older men who were taking my calls and who were the leaders in their field. And the thing that intrigued me so much was that all of them reported that their kids rebelled against whatever they were doing. And I was like, that makes no sense to me. Like, if you feel so good, like that should be just the thing that your kids want to follow you on. Like that didn't make any sense. So then I went and I studied parenting and all the things around that. And I was like, there's got to be a way that we can, we can move like, humanity forward, you know, via parenting. And but it is like Pandora's box. You're like, oh, okay. So now I'm like starting to get more knowledge around this, but then the kids aren't following along. They are rebelling. I mean, it's kind of like, and then and then something else happened, you know, it like can't it kind of leads to even more, right? So you got to keep going, keep going. But that's what you've really been focused on. You've really tied this all together and created something incredible around this. Yeah. So all of that led to a really expensive hobby of interviewing all these people while I had my design company, which at some point people like my, you know, people in my office were like, what are you doing all day? You know, and I'm like, I'm just talking to this doctor. He's amazing. You know, whatever. I'm in growth Um, mode. I'm in growth (laughs) mode. (laughs) Yeah. And eventually that led to me writing plan, simple meals, the book, but I would say like, so that was like the things that like all of that though, even the writing of the book almost led me into what became my relaunch, but really up until the book, I felt like I, you know, I was, Uh, Yeah. I mean, I was, I was being relaunched, but I didn't quite see it yet as the thing that would become my work until I wrote the book. And so in plan, simple meals, what is the, uh, if you're just starting out, what's the first step for someone to take? So that book was really around how to take care of yourself first as a mother um, how to look at food differently. Like, so it was really about quieting the noise and taking care of yourself so that then you could take care of your family. Um, it's almost like it was, boundaries. You were like, okay, yeah, got to set up those boundaries. First yeah. With, I need to do this for me. Yeah. So I wrote the book really to solve the problem that was coming up of like, how do I put together all this work of like, there's good food and there's good parenting. And it doesn't seem like the two things got mixed together because the parenting experts weren't necessarily caring about what people were eating. And the food experts were having children who were going off and eating McDonald's. And I was like, there's got to be a way we can bring this together. So I, I did. So I wrote that book as a dyslexic person. It's a long story, but basically, you know, what I think when we, just like the yoga class, when we make choices, the world sort of unfolds and meets us. So I, I was like, I just knew I had this book, but I couldn't for the life of me figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. And then it was a, it was a black Friday actually. So not so different from when we're recording this in time-wise, but seven or eight years ago, um, I took my kids skating and I fell and I shattered my arm and I had to get emergency surgery on my right arm. So I had this like huge cast I had just had this vision of like, there has to be a book. And so literally sitting on the couch, an uh, an email or an ad just like came before my eyes. And it was like, you speak your book, we write your book. And I was like, no way. (laughs) It's like, what? And so, and it was a bazillion dollars to do this. Like it was like way more than I had ever invested in myself. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that much. It was like, but it was like $45,000 or something to like have this person like help you. And, um, I was like, this is, this is what I'm doing. And so I launched a Kickstarter. I like raised the money. I like sold the books in advance and I wrote the book and it was a amazing, like it was part, definitely part of the path. 
And then what happened is then I did like my next big move, which is I was like, gosh, so now I'm supposed to go on a book tour and I'm, I have three kids who are still, you know, at that point they were, I think in sixth, fourth and first grade. So they were, you know, they were young and I'm supposed to, um, you know, be talking to all these people about how to have family dinner, which was a big part of the book. And I'm going to be in California. My kids are going to be back in Boston. Like that doesn't make any sense to me. So I took them out of school for a year and we went on a book tour. So that was like the next no part. way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it was so, it was so fun. So it was like this whole journey. It was like one thing. Was okay. Just now like where was the that. husband at this time? So he was amazing. Um, and he, we thought about like him going on sabbatical and renting out our house and we rented out our house and then the family who was going to take it, the man gentleman got cancer. And so everything fell through. So in the end it worked out. Okay. So he, it was like a mix up. He would fly and come see us for three weeks and then we would like do more travel. And then I would be with the kids and, speaking at schools at night and they would, you know, be going to sleep. So like, it was this grand adventure. It was great. It was, you it did was, it for a year. Well, we did it. Like we came back and forth. So we went out West for the fall. Then we came back for Christmas and then we went South, you know, in the winter and then we came back. So it was like, we were going all around. So it was, but it was a, you know, it was a year of them out of school. Yes. <laughs> so one of the things that I read about you is, or maybe I was listening to one of your podcasts getting ready for this is that you do a very untraditional Thanksgiving. We do. We just had that. Did this like this whole year abroad or just all over the place spur that or no, know, what spurred us. it was the, was the initial health move. So the initial health move happened in a summer and I, I, you know, we didn't get into the whole story, but I healed myself of all these things, but I also released 60 pounds uh, very quickly. And so, um, and just felt so good. And so that was like, you know, July to October. And so then the holidays were coming and I was like, this doesn't make any sense to me. Like, it doesn't like, there's nothing I want at that point. Like, you know, you know how things just happen for a reason. So I had like done this whole thing of, of ditching gluten and dairy and our middle daughter right at that time got diagnosed with an allergy to dairy and celiac. So she couldn't have them. So it was like, I knew what to do. So we were two people in our family. Nobody liked Turkey. So I was like, we're just, let's just do something different. So it came out of that first year. I was like, there's gotta be a different way. And so we just decided that we would, we would all pick like the thing that we wanted, like, the thing that we liked most and we would make it from scratch. And it was a fantastic. And then you started this last year. Like, yeah. You yeah, said that yeah. you do Asian, you'll do yeah. all these different, whatever like, anybody picks. Yeah. Whatever loved, anybody picks. But I loved hearing that you said it's about coming together and cooking that meal together, yeah. which I think is the best part of Thanksgiving is that literally so many people get involved in the process. Yeah. Like everyone. And I grew, I definitely grew up with a different scenario, which was like, I grew up with a mother who didn't love to cook, which is fine. And, but as a result, like in order to have parties, everything had to be done in advance. So it was like, every time there was a gathering, it was like, how can we finish before so that then we can be in the gathering. And there was something that was always like, that didn't make sense to me. And then I married somebody who like came from a whole lineage of cooks. And when I first started like hanging out with them, they would like feed each other while cooking. Like by the time you had the dinner, it like, wasn't even like, you weren't even, you didn't even need it anymore. Cause you'd like eaten the whole time. Cause you'd enjoyed the whole process. And I had just like, never that had, I didn't understand that before that. So I feel like we, we picked up on that a little bit. So now that you have, you have the book out, you have another, you've got this business. What exactly do you help people with? These yeah. Days? So what happened on the book tour? So I'll tell you this, cause that dovetails into what this, so what happened on the book tour is I, I landed in California first and, you know, I was only three years in to like green smoothies and, you know, eating this way. And I landed in California and I would be in front of like these room full of beautiful women who I was sure knew more about kale than I did. Like, I was just like positive. I was like, what am I doing here? Like over and over and over again. Yet the room still kept getting filled and like news channels still wanted to hear about it. And I was like, what is happening? 
And so I started just asking tons of questions of everybody who, you know, was talking, coming up and asking questions at the end. And what, what I came up with was it has a lot, it had a lot less to do. I mean, obviously there's a lot to learn about food, but I didn't feel like that was necessarily my solution. There's many people who know a lot about food and that's their like love. It's not necessarily my love. I just loved feeling well. But when I went back through like changing my food, writing the book, taking the kids out of school for the year, deciding I could be one kind of entrepreneur and then a different kind of entrepreneur, like all of these felt like really big choices. And I realized that it was how I went about choosing things, making choices, having a vision, making a plan and following through on the plan that was my secret sauce. And that I was doing that in a very balanced way of like knowing that it was okay to be a great mother and be a great entrepreneur and take care of my body. So that became what really is now our work, which is with my work, which is the, the flow planning method came out of that. And it's just this idea that food and lifestyle and the O is for OM. So spirituality, quiet, downtime and work. Not only can we have them all, we need them all for any of the parts to really work. Hmm. And, and so you're right. it is, yeah. you know, it normally people focus in one area. Well, and society has told us, I mean, society has told us since the second we got pregnant that are you going to be a working mom or a stay at home mom? <laughs> right. And God forbid you take care of yourself in either situation because you're supposed to be a martyr mom. And so we've been like so conditioned and so I remember when told. I was at uh, Oracle for almost 10 years, I had corporate guilt. Then yeah. I became an entrepreneur. And then I had, you know, the entrepreneur guilt. Yeah. I mean, it was just like guilt just kept following me around. And then I'd be, yeah. home, I'd be like, I, I'm not even like being a great mom right now. Cause I'm so tired of, you know, what I've been doing at the office and then I'm at the office and I feel, I mean, it just was like, you're just feeling like you're, you know, being pulled every single way. It's like that Gumby, you know, doll where it's like, yeah. you know, the rubbers. And so at this point you have been doing the flow for how long? Um, so at this point, it's funny because COVID is such a weird bubble that I'm like, oh, three years passed. So six years, seven years, six it's years. so true yeah. where you sit there. And like, wait, I remember going maybe to seven. that place like a couple of, you know, a couple of years ago, you're like, oh, wait, wait. Then you add the COVID. Yeah. You say, okay, wait, yeah. it's been four, four and a half. Okay. Um, yeah. so, so we you, started off making a planner and then we, yeah. then we really dove into this other model of just really understanding that planning is great. And that's what we, a lot of what we do. And I usually believe in it, but also being in a supportive community of women, I think is like a necessity, especially. So right how now. can people, I, I agree, but how, what can people do that are listening right now? We're coming into holiday season. You know, I was kind of in the back of my mind when you, you know, mentioned alcohol and we're about to get into January. We do dry January. Yes, we feel amazing. My husband and I sit there and we're like, oh, feel so good. And, you know, we're, oh my God, we're sleeping better than ever. And then February one hits and we're like, woohoo, I'll take a glass of wine. Yeah. And I'm like, why do we do this crazy, crazy, crazy thing? And this is the first year that we're actually taking our holiday the 31st of January. So it's, or thir sorry, 31st of December. So it's, it's right the first week into dry January. We're like, what are we going to do? Ew. Oh my God. That's so funny. <laughs> so tell me, and we really don't know what we're going to do yet. We might have to add an <laughs> additional week. So if you're thinking about, you know, having plans with us, maybe like you're not going to want to until later <laughs> because we do go into our own little cocoon, yeah. but what do you suggest? What are some tips that people can do coming in to have, to have the boundaries, to not just blow it out, but also to start to create some of these better habits. Yeah. So, so whether, no matter what season you're going into, and just so you know, like the flow planning method is all based on the fact that I don't think women should ever think beyond a season. So the planner is for 90 days. Like, I just think seasons are magical for us because our life totally changes agree. so drastically I'm within right a year. Yeah. Mm. So it's like, whether you're going to the holiday season or, you know, the new year or the summer or whatever season you're in. Um, I always start with the question and this is how the planner starts too. But I ask everyone this question. I ask myself, this question is how do you want to feel? Because we forget, like we're just not attached to that. And here's the thing about overwhelm. Overwhelm is a feeling. 
So overwhelm has nothing to do with how many things on your to-do list you have. You could have three things you need to do today, and you could have 55 things you have to do today. And with, about either of those things, you could feel overwhelmed or you could feel excitement. It really is a choice. It has nothing to do with the things. It has all to do with our feelings. So I think a really great and, and not is, just our feelings, but it's how you view those. Yeah, like, how you view your you feelings. Say. Yeah, absolutely. You absolutely. know, a lot of people come and say, "Oh, I've got this problem, a problem, problem, problem," and it's like, "Is it a problem, or can we say it's a project?" You've got a project right, right. now. You're working right, on. exactly, you know, exactly. We call it the relaunch flip. You know, you flip yeah. these things to make it, you know, not as overwhelming like you just. Yeah. Said. So I, I love yeah. that. How do you want? Yes, yeah, so it's all about how you look about. How do you want to feel? And the the thing is, is that like I think a lot of us think everybody wants to feel the same way, but but I I run I do this all. We just had a retreat, and there was like a hundred women there, and we asked the question about the holiday season, and literally there was a hundred different answers. Like maybe there was a couple that overlap, but everybody wants to feel different. Some people want to feel connected in this moment. Some people want to feel calm. Some people want to feel excited. Some people want to feel joy. Some people want to feel healthy. Like it really is not all the same. It's, it's very individual. And so it does take a certain amount of just like being able to be quiet, I think, to just really tap into that. But like, not for hours, just like 30 seconds of quiet. You just need to be able to pause. Long you can tell people are like, deserved. Oh God, how long is this going to take? No, but it's like 30 so seconds. You... you just close your eyes. You imagine like the easiest way to do it is to close your eyes and imagine the future. So either imagine your holidays or imagine the year or imagine whatever, and just notice how you feel imagining that. And that's pretty much usually how you want to feel. And so from that, then as you start making choices about you know, am I going to drink now? Am I not going to drink? Am I going to eat this? Am I not going to eat this? You, you can just ask yourself, you can do two things with that feeling. One, you can say like, well, if I eat the cake, is it going to make me feel healthy? If that's my word. And, and when you're like, of course it's not, or if it's going to make me feel calm, right? Cause sugar makes you whatever. If, wow. if your word is joy and the chocolate cake, like literally join, like reminds you of this memory of your childhood. And it's so important. You might say, you know what, that time I am going to have the ch chocolate cake. Right. So it's like, it literally helps you think of the answers. So that's one way you can use the word. And then the other way is that sometimes there's things that just come up, especially around holidays. Like we have to go to this family gathering or, you know, like there's things that maybe you've already said yes to, or a boundary that you didn't make that you might make next year, but you didn't make yet this year. And so with those, we can say, how can I feel more calm, joyful, whatever, when I walk in that room that initially makes me feel stressful. So you can use, you can use the word just to create a lot of just freedom in, in, mm. in how you navigate a room because or you're allowed to make the choice. It's like yeah. those words when you're like, I have to do this. Yes. I'm supposed to do this. You know, no, you're making the choice to do it. That's right. you have to. And the other thing that's really powerful to think about with those feelings and a hundred percent, the second you start saying, I have to, that's such a great tip is to just be like, wait, can I say I want to, or I'm going to, or, you know, like, can I, oh, can I'm, I choosing? Say that? I'm choosing, I'm choosing to, to. yeah. But the other thing is the other word I love is, and so I can be overwhelmed with a situation and I can find joy in it. And so I think a lot of it's that same thing about as women, we're always told there's a choice between two things. I find the more I can, I notice that there's like two things that I can hold the tension between. There's a lot of freedom in that. Cause it's like, oh yeah, it's like hard mm -hmm. to walk into that room because there's a lot of childhood memories in there. And I'm now my 47 year old self and I can find joy. I like that you use and and not but. I think too many yeah. people go with the but because whatever follows but is somehow form of either a limiting belief, a negative yes. belief, a negative thought, something that we don't want. We want to get yeah. that but out of there. So I think that this is so fascinating. And where can people find more about your program, about you, follow you? Surprise, surprise. It's all at plansimple.com. <laughs> It's very simple. Again, though. keep it simple. Um, <laughs> Plansimple.com. So yeah. And if you go to plansimple.com, you, you should see in a couple of places, pretty close to the top of the page that there's a free course and it's called from overwhelmed to ease. And you can go get that. And it starts with 
really understanding feelings. So the whole process starts with really understanding feelings and gets you and brings you through to the part of um, how we recommend planning a day. So that's what the the course takes you through and it gives you our planning sheets and whatnot. So that's there's so much more on that site, but that's a great starting point. And we'll have all of this in the show notes as well. And I always like to wrap up with asking you, you know, what is the one thing that you really love to recommend to people, you know, your go-to product at this point right now? <laughs> it's so funny because I'm like, <laughs> there's so many things to share about food. And like the initial thing that comes to my head is, Go get a good pair of Spanx pants. <laughs> I don't know why that's hey, something. Everyone needs a pair of those, <laughs> right? I'm, I'm thinking of. We just that's a did good a one. Episode ourselves on on dressing. Now that the pandemic, now that we're like actually going out into now the world, that we're going back right? out. Yeah, yeah, and I think yeah, yeah, and, and I think that's we were, great. We were laughing, so that, so that was that was the first thing that came to my head. But the other thing is, um, anything that becomes a ritual. So a lot of the times, the reason that we like, al- we, we go to alcohol or to coffee or to any of these things is because we've created a ritual around them. We create the ritual of going to Starbucks and even talking to the barista because like no one is talking to us when we have small babies. Um, or we have the glass of wine because we're tired at the end of the day and we need like an anchor to like literally bridge us between like work and family. But anything can be that. So like tea is one of my favorite things to just become a connoisseur of. And just like, is the, I mean, green tea, maybe at night would still make you stay up, but you know, an they herbal tea, so, like, is oh, they've got so many good ones now. Yeah. To see yeah. my tea drawer. It's like, I so like good. Right. So like tea candles, like any mm. ritual that you can create to just like disrupt the pattern mm. that has become the ritual. I think those are the products that I would recommend, <laughs> even though that's not as specific as yeah, things. <laughs> I think you know what? I love that. And I also, during that month of January, I find that in a wine glass, if I just put sparkling water, it does the same thing, which is I yeah. think exactly what you're saying. It's like, it's that I have my glass, I'm sitting down, we're talking, you know, we're, we're kind of sharing our day but you don't, it doesn't have to be wine. It just as easily we do the same thing. And after, you know, I find after three or four days, no matter what, if I'm going on like a sugar, you know, with all the desserts that are happening. And if all of a sudden I just cut those out three days later, it's not even like you want them anymore. Your, you know, your taste buds and things are not on high alert. It's when you go back in and you want it again, then it's like, Ding, 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 ding. I want more. I want more. Well, Mia, this has been so much fun. Thank you for stopping on by and sharing all this greatness. And I think that, you know, the simple plan is so perfect in today's world, even probably more so than it was when you first started it, right? This is becoming that much more significant where people are finding that a lot of the the things that are coming up in their own lives are being caused by unknowns. And when you take out some of the food choices, you can, you can get to the bottom pretty quickly. So really, really interesting. And I look forward to having people go over to your site and looking at more of what you have to offer. So thanks so much for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This has been so fun. All right, everyone live now, love now relaunch. Now is your time. We'll see you next time. You've just heard another episode of the Relaunch Podcast. If something shared in this episode resonated with you, please head over to iTunes right now and leave us a five-star review and share this episode with others to inspire them to take the small steps that lead to a life full of purpose and possibility. And remember, you can have immediate access to the show notes and any giveaways at the relaunchco.com backslash podcast. Until next week, now is your time to relaunch your transition into a transformation.